So guys, welcome back to Adventures. I'm here in Sydney, about to board my flight to go to Auckland, New Zealand. So they have no information about what the gate is assigned to. And they're about to start boarding. But it's uh, after speaking to a few people, I finally figured it out. This is the right one. So I'm all the way here on this side of the world, so I figured why not? New Zealand is right next door, you know, two hours. So I might as well go check it out. So that's what I'm about to do. And uh, if I record, cool. If not, then I will be posting some pictures on the Instagram. Check it out. days is really enough in the country. There never seems to be enough. For some people, it's three, four days in the city. Others, is a week. For me, you just never have enough time when you have too much fun. And that's basically how it felt when I left Sydney. I felt like I just didn't have enough time. But being so far out, I wanted to explore a whole nother country and expose myself to even more differences, more cultures, something even more different. So that's basically what led me to my trip to Oakland today. So I arrived at the airport, ready to check in and board my flight. So here we are, boarding our flight from Sydney to Oakland. I don't know anyone there, and I don't know what to expect. Didn't do much research, but last minute trip, when you're all the way on this side of the world, you wanna see as much as you can. So let's go ahead and do that. So I should say, generally, traveling with a US passport is an amazing experience. I've traveled with people who had a completely different passport than mine, either from Africa or some other developing countries, and the difference is quite stark. So to my surprise, what happened to me when I arrived in New Zealand was absolutely insane. It's something that I thought was completely uncalled for. I was ready to tell the agent, you know what? Let me just fly back to Sydney because I didn't understand what was going on. Let's continue to watch. No fancy business class, no premier economy, nothing. Last minute ticket, it would have cost me like $80 to be honest with you guys, but it ended up costing me, you know, almost three times that because I booked last minute. But at least the visa came through fast, so. Guys, uh, I just uh, cleared customs. This has been the worst entrance I ever had in the country before. So one thing about my journey to New Zealand, I wanted to save some money. <laughs> I have to be honest, Australia, the way I did it, it left a big hole in my pocket. So I didn't want to have another experience that was going to be so expensive. So looking online, I struggled trying to find something within budget. Oakland is slightly cheaper than Sydney, Australia, but it's still expensive nonetheless. But I found a hotel that was reasonably priced, about $120 a night, right in the heart of Oakland. And it had decent reviews, except the fact that there were some noise complaints. And that's when I decided that, you know what? I can deal for a little bit of noise. Everything else is okay. So I booked in this particular location. I mean, the worst. I got delayed here by customs. Because apparently saying, you're a vlogger, you have no plans is weird. So, I will get back in the car here. I wanted to start this conversation while I'm still here. I'm pretty upset because I don't want to go ahead and say it's a race thing. But when you travel around and nobody looks like you anywhere, and you're the one that gets picked and basically screened all the way to your freaking underwear. I mean, literally. And scanned and re-scanned. It's... Um, I was not expecting it at all. So, so far, really bad impression. But let me tell you guys a full story shortly. So guys, I got picked up here by a gentleman from Fiji. What is your name? Camelus. Camelus. Cam. Cam, okay. So guys, I had a really bad experience at the airport, man. Okay? It was really, really unfortunate. Since I've traveled, I've never, this has never happened to me before. Where they actually put me on the side 
take me in the back, open my briefcase, suitcase, everything, open everything. I mean everything. They take it out, like empty. They search for pockets that I never even opened in my suitcase. Then I ask the guy, what is the problem, you know? He's like, uh, what, what are you coming to do in New Zealand? <laughs> I'm like, I'm on vacation. He asked me how many times I've been to New Zealand, like three or four times. I don't know why. Like, what is so strange about coming to New Zealand? I don't want to say it's a race thing, but it was weird that I'm the only person that he selected out of the whole line, you know? So I'm curious what's going on here in New Zealand. Would you say people are a little bit racist here? Uh, depends, you know? Not really. Yeah? How long you been living here? Oh, long time, man. Wow. 37 years. 70 years? 37. 37. Do you go back to Fiji sometimes? Oh, in my early days, I used to go, yeah. Not anymore? No, nah, it's better to see some other, like Australia or South Island. Yeah. yeah. Alright, makes sense. Yeah, it's good to explore, you know, I have the same problem. I travel a lot, you know, and people always ask me, when are you going to go back to Cameroon? And I'm like, you know, I've been there, I've seen it, I want to see something else. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that you said that. <laughs> yeah. And I it's, still, um, I still will go back, my boy. Oh, yeah, of course. You want to go eventually, but it's not like your priority right now. No, no. Yeah. I totally understand. I can sympathize with that. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing for me. But everything is clean here. Look, everything is so clean. Oh, have you been to Fiji? I've never been to Fiji. Try, try once. Then it's a different, it's wow. One of the best place in the world. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. It's a paradise. Wow, I need to check that out. And people friendly. Yeah. Wow. All right. Take a train ride just to see you. Ride for hours just to please you. You don't know how much I need you. Cause you're my home. puking out there drinking too much this place one of the reviews said no elevator so I already knew what to expect so I'm in the core of the city and I'm booking uh, I booked last minute so this is basically what's expected out here people complained about noise so this is gonna be a very different experience than what I had in Sydney I can tell I'm trying to find a room number, not this side. Not this side, okay. I did put my code in and now this is the room. So besides the lack of elevators, this is actually a very decent room, right? And the main reason why I booked here is because I am in the core downtown area. 
So, let's take a look. So I can put my uh, suitcase over here. They have a refrigerator, empty. And then uh, let's see what the shower is looking like. Man, okay. This is uh, basic, nothing too crazy. But it's not bad, it's not dirty. And uh, when you're tired, even the sound of the street is gonna be uh, soothing. <laughs> so now we're all settled in. Let me get into what really happened at the airport. So my plane took off from Australia. Actually, let me backtrack a little bit. Really shout out to Australia because they have amazing systems at the airport. Landing or taking off, you don't have to talk to an actual agent. If you have a passport from one of the first world countries, like the US, France, Germany, countries like that, basically you scan your passport, you, f you wait a few minutes, and unless you have a problem, you get scanned in and you go, you continue your journey. You don't have to talk to an agent about why you come in the country, what branch you're there, how many days you're coming. You know, these standard questions that they ask you at immigration when you're crossing customs around the world. Landing in Sydney, Australia and taking off from Sydney, Australia, I didn't have to deal with any of this. So when I landed in Oakland, I was very excited, you know, new country, new destination. Yay, one more thing I can check off my list. So I crossed customs there was absolutely no issues but then when i went to secondary because there was a line that you had to follow there was an agent standing there but i was the only black person on that plane so very early on i noticed how the secondary officer was looking at me and i was smiling because i'm thinking maybe it's just my head i'm thinking too much there's nothing going on so he asked me if we could see my passport and i said sure no problem so i showed him my passport and he took it so he started checking pages and you can see stamps after stamps after stamps. I travel quite a bit. My passport is just about full. And I'm thinking for as much as I've traveled, he can see all the stamps on my passport. You know, this screening is not going to be any different than everything else I've dealt with traveling around the world. He asked me why I came in the country. I said to him, I was on vacation. He said, okay, what are you planning to do while you're here? I said, I honestly don't know. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. He said, do you know anybody in New Zealand? I said, no, I don't. I don't know anybody here. This will be my first time in the country. And I'm planning to walk around and basically see where the wind blows. <laughs> he didn't like that answer too much, guys. He said, you know what? Follow me. And he left his position and took me down this hallway. So I'm walking behind him and we entered this room and there's just maybe two of the officers monitoring screens. This is clearly a security area. So he sits me down and proceeds to ask me again why I came in the country. I said to him that I'm on vacation. I was in Australia and I realized that New Zealand is real close. So I got a visa and I decided to come and take a look. He asked me the same questions again about why I came in the country, how long I was going to stay over and all of that. And I told him, honestly, I'm not sure yet. You know, some countries have a requirement where you have to have an exit plane ticket. Well, New Zealand was not one of those. I didn't have to have an exit ticket to enter, nor did he ask me for an exit ticket. I basically told him I was gonna be around for a few days and then I would decide where I go from there. He asked me again where I worked. I told him he wanted to see proof of income. I said to him, I don't walk around my pay stub. And I, I, was, I was getting a little bit annoyed because he was like really pushing. And I said to him, let me ask you this. When do you travel? Do you take pay stubs with you? Is it a standard thing that people take when they travel, a pay stub? How would you, what would you ask me if I have my pay stub? Nobody that I know of travels with the pay stub. Now, if you wanna see my bank account, I can open my bank account on my phone and I can actually show you transactions. But don't ask me for my pay stub. Who, who brings their pay stubs on vacation? So he didn't like anything I was saying. So I explained to him that, you know, I'm a YouTuber as well and basically, stories happen naturally so i don't force them i don't know anybody and things would just open up naturally like it has been the case for me in australia i opened my phone i showed him my youtube channel i asked him to subscribe i thought i was being sarcastic but in order to kind of lower 
the temperature a little bit. He looked at my channel and I, I don't think he was satisfied with it. So he told me to hold on. He left, I guess, to talk to some kind of supervisor. And then he came back. And once he came back, he told me to completely strip. So I was stripped, guys, to my boxes. They opened my suitcase. They opened my bags. They opened everything. I felt like I was some kind of drug dealer. I mean, this guy, the aggressively, in which he was searching my stuff, it was like he was convinced that he's gonna find something in my bag. So I said to him, why are you doing all of this? What is the problem? He said, this is a routine check. I said, it's very interesting that the person that's the most malinated here is the one that you choose to pull on the side. He didn't respond at that point. He opened every single pouch in my bag. Even pouches that I never used before. He opened everything. My stuff was laid down on the table. And throughout the search, he kept asking me questions. What are you gonna do in New Zealand? What are your plans tomorrow? What are your plans after that? I said, I don't have plans. Now, sometimes I will book tours. The problem with New Zealand is that if you look online, either on Airbnb Experience, where I normally book most of my tours, you will see that there's nothing for New Zealand. That's what happens in some countries. And I don't use Expedia and stuff like that. Generally, I just go with the flow. So no, I don't have any plans. He was very shocked. He seemed to be so surprised that someone can travel that far, come here in Oakland, and not have a single plan. I asked him if he ever met a YouTuber before. A lot of YouTubers don't have plans. You know? <laughs> we just go with the flow, and then things just happen. At least I do. So that's basically the way I've traveled for years, that I've never had that problem. I've been to many countries this far, and I've never had an officer on my case like this guy was. He searched my bags for so long. It took at least an hour and a half. When he was done, unsatisfied, he couldn't find anything. He took my suitcases empty and my bags somewhere, told me he was going to scan them and came back. I told him, listen, if anything comes up positive on my bags, if anything comes up positive, you took my bags away from my site. I don't know what you could put on them. I think it's a pretty ridiculous policy for you guys to remove somebody's property and take him somewhere. If you're gonna be scanning my bag as a normal course of your job, that's fine. But I need to witness that because how can I trust that you're not gonna slide something in my bag and then accuse me of possessing something I'm not supposed to? He stood there stunned and told me that's the policy. And I said, if you are looking for problems, this is the best way to do that. I think that as a routine policy, you guys should not separate individuals who haven't been accused of anything from their property. How am I supposed to know you're not going to do something with that stuff? And that's really where my mood changed to getting very, very upset. And I said, this is ridiculous. You have absolutely no right to take my bags away from my eyesight and take it God knows where. This is insane. So he looked at me a little bit shocked. So he left and a few minutes later, as I'm sitting there huffing and puffing, he came back in the, in the room. And then he said to me, well, you can go ahead and put your stuff back. I said, fine. So I started putting my stuff back in. Guys, I travel light, but imagine your, your suitcase, your backpack, everything just basically, everything taken out. Even my toiletries. He removed my toothbrush, my toothpaste, everything was out of the bag. So I had to basically repack everything. And he said, do you need help packing? And I said, no, that's okay. I think you've done enough. So that's basically what happened. I don't know why they put me on the side. I don't know why they chose me. I don't know what they were expecting to find in my property. But regardless, whatever they were looking for, they didn't find it. But they left a really bitter taste in my mouth. And this has never, ever happened before. And officer, if you're watching me, next time, maybe don't separate the individual from the property. Maybe next time explain or give at least a reason why I'm suspicious. Why me and not everybody else? And the whole time I was in that room, which is clearly big enough to host more than one person, why am I the only one that got pulled out of the lineup? Why am I the only one that you chose to strip search? I understand it's the airport, you can check and ask questions. But why are you pulling me on the side and do all that thorough search? What is it about me that sparked your interest? Or what were you trying to get out of me? That was so unnecessary, uncalled for, and a waste of your time, and a waste of my time. So luckily, everything turned out to be okay, and I finished packing my bags, and I was basically out of the airport. So that's what happened to me. 
This has never ever happened in the past. I've traveled in just about every other continent before this experience here and never once did this ever happen to me. I'm not against being checked. That's what happens at airports. But that kind of thorough search without even being provided a reason about something I said, no, not everybody who travels has plans. Not everybody who travels has a complete schedule. Some people just travel and go with the flow. And I don't think that's a reason to double search somebody in the way you guys handled it. I'm the only brown skinned person entering at that time and I'm the one getting pulled. So that was kind of interesting. So I can already feel the energy here is very different. There's something really fancy about Sydney that so far I'm not feeling in here. So it seems like definitely Australia has a lot more money, but I don't know. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna see what I can get myself into, right? So this trip, this is really just exploring the world. I have no intention to vlog heavily here, but I'm gonna be collecting some moments and kind of give you, you know, my point of view about, you know, New Zealand. Should you come here? It's pretty far. Is, is it worth the trip? and uh, how much does it cost and things like that. So we're gonna get into all of that. Let's go ahead and check out uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Good morning, Auckland. Wow. So today is another day I passed out yesterday. I walked around the street a little bit and I can tell you guys, this place is very different than Sydney in the sense that it is more like middle-class city. You don't feel like people are bougie like you do in Sydney, you know? <laughs> but this hotel, boy, I tell you what, it is loud. You know, it's a perfect location. Like I'm right down here. I'm gonna show you guys again when I step outside. Like it's a great view and definitely best location, but the the walls are very thin they're paper thin and you can basically hear people coming in and out closing the doors and every you can hear everything people are doing in their rooms this is really frustrating not to mention the outdoor traffic as well so i'm about to step out another problem you have here if i should mention that what is the one thing the stairs yeah so if you bring a lot of luggage now i travel light but if you bring a lot of luggage here you're gonna have a good time. And it's apparently mixed with the hostel. Mm -hmm. So there's like a hostel side to this thing here. You know, very affordable place. That's completely different than where I'm staying. The individual rooms are on that side. Okay, so if you're interested in coming to New Zealand on a budget, this is definitely the place. They have a couch over here. And then underneath there's a bar. But a lot of the reviews online were saying that the bar makes noise and it's very frustrating. But that's not the case at all. I have no problems. You know, I guess maybe I just passed out, I don't know, but, you know, so yeah, you have the stairs, you know, really no elevators to speak of, so you have to. Hello, folks. Hello, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Good, thank Hello. And then they have the bar here, you know, so, you know, you can have yourself a drink out here, get something to eat, and then I'm going to show you guys, they have a pool table, they have a pool table here. So this is a good place for you to chill with your friends or whatever. The bathroom on that side, you have your little pool. And then they have a private entrance if you come after hours when the bar is actually closed. All right, so they have your ATM machine right down here. And that's basically, that's that. You know, that's your lobby. Oh yeah, and the gaming lounge over here, like a little casino type of thing. So that's what you get on this side. So the best, the best thing about this place, when you step out, you know, look at this view. You know, you're in the heart of the city. That is what I love about this location the most. And that's why I booked here. Not to mention the prices. Most of the hotels here will run you no less than 250, 300 or more a night. You know what I'm saying? I think it's also because I was doing this last minute, but I definitely book early. So the city, it gives you a little vibe. Again, I'm, I hate to say this. You get a very strong North American vibe, you know, over here. You know, that's what you get on this side over here. So in front of my hotel, you have apartments and then the, the city has a lot of hills, you know, so that's what you got going on right down here okay so new zealand is known for the wine so today i'm gonna do fish and wine yesterday i was eating an amazing piece of steak 
If you don't follow me on Instagram, check it out for additional information regarding my trip. So I posted some of the footage there and it's a great place, it's called Botswana Butchery. The Botswana Butchery, it's an amazing, amazing restaurant here. Amazing steak, I had a, I had the tomahawk. You know, for those who know me, I love those damn tomahawks. And I love my uh, Cosmopolitans as well. So I'm gonna call an Uber and I'm gonna go out to eat at this specific restaurant. So I'll see you on the other side. When you say New Zealand, you also say wine. And one of the things that most people do when they come over here, is explore the different vineyards. I'm here on the harbor side, which is the second time my GPS has brought me here. Yesterday was here for dinner, and I'm back here again today. So you have the ferry building right here, the Intercontinental Hotel, and several other office buildings right there. And you have a huge food court on that small building you see right in front of me over there. So most people come over here in the morning to catch the different ferries and go to the different wine regions. So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like over here, all right? So unfortunately, because I'm by myself, I am not gonna be taking a boat today, all right? But I wanted to show you the area here. So this is the harbor side. Here we are. Beautiful green water. So walking around Oakland with no guidance, no plans, no guides, I saw this gentleman sitting on the floor without any shoes on. So in my attempt to always connect, you know, I always try to connect with locals. Cause you can walk around as a tourist all day, but nothing beats a meeting an actual local. So I was happy to meet this person and I asked him a few questions about his city. And this is what he said. Can I talk to you on camera real quick? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Cole. Cole? So I'm visiting from Washington DC. Uh, it's yeah. my first time here yeah. and you are from New Zealand yeah, yeah. from Oakland yeah tell me about your city man I'm lost uh, <laughs> big, big city big city man I'm from down south so South Island yeah I moved here been here three years big yeah. city cool stuff what I is got, the best actually, thing I got aunties in DC oh is that uh, right Delaware oh just, just yeah, yeah yeah it's not far from me like yeah. ba barely an hour at the most yeah in Delaware man yeah I've been, been to DC before 2015 Oh, okay. No, Auckland's cool, man. Like, big. If you got time, go over to like Rangitoto or something. Yeah. The volcano. The volcanoes. That's where they get the boat to go to the wine regions, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, the ferry is all over there. So you can get the ferry. See that big green volcano tip out there? Over there. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Rangitoto. Rangitoto. Uh, How far is it from here? Half an hour ferry. Half an hour. Worth it, man. Like, stunning. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, dormant volcano. And I get the ticket to get the ferry. I get that over there. Uh, just in there. Yeah. Oh, in the office building right, right there. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, you man. Either that or Waikiki, but like Rangitoto. Yeah. Amazing, man. Okay. We'll do that. Thank you so That's much. A good city. All right. Yeah, I like it here. It's very clean. And you, yeah, you've got it on a nice day. It rains a lot though. Oh, it rains often. Yeah, it rains a lot. Wow. Now nah, there's a lot. If you get out the city, man, there's a lot to see. Yeah, I see everything is packed here too. I was in Sydney. Yeah. And it's so much bigger, but this is a much smaller yeah. city. Yeah. You can do a lot more faster here. Yeah, Rang so. Rangitoto is nice, or even going up to like Mount Eden. Yeah. You go up Mount Eden for a walk, and then you got a view, full 360 degrees of the city. Okay. That's nice. Which one is the? What is the closest vineyard here? Waikiki. Waikiki. But you also have to get on the ferry to yeah, get there. Yeah, worth it, man. Yeah, amazing. You can get, take the ferry over there. I think yeah. it's like 50 bucks. Yeah. Turn. Um, and you get off the ferry, 10 minute walk from the winery. Okay. All those buses there. What, it's, it's, I think it's like 50 wineries on the island. Wow. So I'd actually, if you're into wineries, I'd recommend that over, over Rangitoto. Okay. Good it's to stunning, go. stunning over there. Way, about 45 minutes that way. On the, on the, on the boat. Out east, yeah. 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 You just get the ferry from right there. Yeah. I think they leave every half hour. Yeah? Okay. Worth it, man. But in the city, wineries out west, but it's not, like, it's nice, but it's not as nice as over there. Yeah. yeah. I was also looking for uh, a neighborhood that is a little dodgy. Is there such a thing <laughs> in New Zealand? Uh, it seems like everything is clean and proper. I wanted to see some <laughs> dirt craziness uh, and weird people, if there is such a thing here. Probably the further south you go, South Auckland, but... So I'd say it's pretty dodgy. Yeah. Uh, Pupakohi. Makohi? Pupakohi. Pupakohi. Yeah. So a bit dodgy down there, but it's not much to see, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather go to a winery and wake. Yeah, no, it's just, um, see, by myself, it's a little bit different. If I was here with someone else, you know.
But drinking wine alone is a little bit weird. Mind you, I, I just went to Europe by myself for three months. And is that right? Yeah, I, I went to wineries by myself. It's good. Yeah. yeah, it's great. You gotta do but, that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you gotta. But yeah, I'd, man, I'd highly, highly recommend going over. Even there. during the week like this? Because somebody told me it's better on the weekend. You think yeah. the wineries are open too, every too, day? Too busy on the weekends. Oh, that's week, true. Weekdays are better, quieter. Yeah. Yeah, you got more more space. That's true. You're not as busy. Yeah. And the ferry's quiet as well. That's very true. Good yeah. point. Yeah, I'm gonna go in and then definitely catch that that ferry there. Yeah, so it's worth it, man. Okay. Otherwise, like, nah, yeah, Waiheke is nice, man. Like, very uh, tropical island. Wow. But it's only 45 minutes. Yeah. Very worth it. And the boats they run pretty often. Every half hour. Every half hour. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, but you Thank just, you so just much. Get in there, grab a ticket. Yeah. On your way, man. It's it's and it's a good day for today. It is. It is beautiful. Because yesterday you, you was raining. You only need like five hours over there. They the ferries run up until like midnight. Oh, yeah. that's that was my concern. I was thinking maybe it's too it's too late to book one now because coming back might be a problem. Nah, but nah. no. Okay. You, you just you just book a ticket and you don't have to turn up at a certain time. You just turn up and hop on. Yeah. So your ticket's not tied to like twelve thirty. Yeah. Or one o'clock. It's yeah. just a anytime use. Yeah. Is there a national dish in New Zealand or a national drink? I know you guys are great for uh, wine, lamb. but lamb is a national lamb. dish. Or well, we've probably got the world's best lamb. Beast lamb. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Red meat. Um, national dish. Power. Power. What is that? Uh, it's a uh, abalone um, seafood. Yes. It's a shellfish. Power. Yeah. Did you see power? Yeah. yeah. Get that or lamb. But power is like endemic to New Zealand. You can only find it here. Is it fish, right? Ah, uh, it's a shellfish. Shellfish. Yeah. Power. Okay. Yeah. Kind of like a kind of like a mussel. Yes. But different. Yeah. All right. And if somebody is watching this video and want to visit your country, besides the wine, the volcano. Do you think it's the right move coming to Oakland or should they go to Wellington instead? And if so, why? Because this country does not have a lot of coverage, you know? That's why nah, I came here yeah. to kind of see what it's all about. Yeah, Auckland, if you were to see the best of New Zealand, you'd go to the South Island. You'd okay. Go, you go to the South Island, you've got beaches, you've got lakes, you've got mountains, you've got yes. canyons. Yeah, and it's small, less people. Canyons? Yeah. People from Kenya? Nah, Kenyan, Kenyan. Uh, oh, Kenyans, okay. <laughs> they actually, the small boat. Because I have a lot of viewers from Kenya, so I was like, oh, what do you mean, Kenyans? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, South, South Island, South Island. Okay. Yeah, all, Auckland's good, but I, I personally like being out of the city. Yes. Like in the bush, going for walks. It's much better, right? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Every city's the same in a way. That's yeah, true. It's, it's nice and green. It's true. But yeah, man, I'd recommend Waiheke. Waiheke. It's, it's, a, it's a cheap. Cheap trip. Yes. It's worth it. Nice winery. Nice 100%. People. I'm going to do that. Yeah, definitely worth it. Okay. Any particular winery you recommend out there? Who has a big name? Mudbrook. 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 Okay, Mudbrook. That, that's pretty, that's the closest one to the ferry terminal and you can see the skyline, you can see the sky tower from there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Mudbrook. Um, Tantalus. Tantalus is nice. Tantalus is well. You've got to take a bus there or a taxi, but it's easy. Okay. Um, but yeah, Mudbrook. Mudbrook's a good one. Sounds good. And there's Mudbrook, Cable Bay. Next to Mudbrook, you can walk to four different ones. Yeah. So yeah, easy as. Okay. I'll definitely do that then. Sounds good. Well, I won't take more of your time. Thank no, you so much for trying out, nice, man. Nice talk, man. Nice All right. I hope you enjoy it. And Thank I, you. I, ho I hope you get over there. I will. I hope you get over there. I definitely there. will. You, you, won't, you won't regret it. Especially All right. a day like this. A beautiful day. Yeah, Might as well do it. Beautiful. That's right. And it, it'll be nice. Like, good wine. Good, they'll probably have some power or lamb over there. Yes. Yeah. All right. Nah, enjoy it, man. Sounds good. We do. Enjoy, enjoy Thank you so road. much. All right. Cheers. So you heard it. Definitely the wineries. I'm going to try to get up there when I finish my lunch. And uh, I will bring you guys those views, right? So New Zealand wine is definitely well known and recommended. And it is to no surprise to me that, you know, you meet a New Zealander who recommends that as well, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and try to get some food and then um, basically get some information for you guys about the boat ride. So at least you know what, how much you, you're looking at you know, in order to, to get out to the winery, all right? Guys, let's get to the restaurant and get something to eat. So after the recommendations I received earlier, I decided that, you know what, forget lunch. I'm just gonna get on this boat, pick up some snacks, and I'm gonna eat at the winery so I can kind of see what's going on. I'm a sucker for wine. 
So I figured, you know what? Let's go ahead and find out what's happening over there. So guys, I got me a ticket. It's $59 round trip. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and board the ferry on Pier 11 on this side over here. All right. And we're gonna go drink some wine in Oahiki. You've seen a city before, you know what it looks like. So it will be a lot more fun to see something a little bit different, right? And you can't come to New Zealand and not have wine, so why not go to the wine region? It's about a 40 minute boat ride. Gonna enjoy it and then come back. Let's see. The whole screening process was smooth. I bought the ticket literally five minutes before they started boarding. It was very fast and efficient. Everybody lines up and then just start boarding. You know, so I was very excited to go see this island that he kept talking about and recommending to me. So I was boarding and everything was going well. But then something else took a turn. So I got the ticket at the last minute. We are boarding now. So let's go ahead. On this boat, guys. Let's get on this little ferry. This is be something a little bit different. They're just hanging out around the city, right? Let's roll. and comfortable in the ferry heading out to the wine region Wahiki New Zealand if there's one thing I really wanted to do one of my bucket list item was to try wine in New Zealand so I'm excited to get to do this haven't eaten all day so I'm gonna eat a little bit of these uh, croissants and my Gatorade and 40 minutes guys and we are riding to the wine region let's get this done right behind me. Here we are. We're heading out to Wehiki, which is apparently an amazing plan to go out there and check it out, you know? But he wants so, to go to check it out. I gotta go get a drink. Can I leave this place without checking it out, right? So most people were sitting in groups and I was basically the only one sitting by myself at this table. And then this white gentleman sat in front of me and he had a very interesting accent. He kind of reminded me of the uh, Southern accent in the United States. He basically asked me if we could sit on that table and there was nobody in front of me. So I said, sure, please have a seat. So he sat down and we started talking about everything under the sun. So he figured out very quickly that I was actually new in the country and traveling to the vineyard. And he asked me if I needed help venturing out there. Now guys, I just met this guy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who he is. You know, he just basically asked me my plans and I'm just, you know, having conversations with him. But then he asked me if I need help. And I'm like thinking, well, I kind of do, right? I don't know where I'm going. This guy is obviously... A local he knows what's going on he knows where to go or how to get places and he told me that he has a contracting company and basically they remodel houses on the island now this is where the rich hide guys this is the island where people build homes mansions and many of them don't even come to these houses they're like secondary or third house for these multi-millionaires and billionaires on this island so i said sure i'm gonna grab a bus and go to the vineyard so he basically said you don't have to take a bus i have my van over there and my guys 
ready to pick you up and take you to the vineyard. <laughs> Guys, imagine me, again, the only black person, right? In this boat, in New Zealand, this country that I don't know anything about, and then this gentleman that I don't know is asking me if he could give me a ride to this place. And he says there's a van. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm about to get kidnapped. It doesn't end there. He gets his phone. Once I agreed that I could get a ride, he calls his friends and he said, yes, I have this Negro that is coming with me and you guys can give him a ride to this other place. Woo! So this is where I was like, oh my God, I'm definitely going to kidnap, right? So he's white. He's calling me a Negro to my face, just like that face to face. But I had to take a step back and ask myself, Ivan, does he mean it in an offensive way or not? If he meant it to be offensive, would he have said it in such a free way? If it was kind of like he was saying, my buddy is coming with me? I hesitated, but I started thinking, well, Ivan, you're not in the US right now. This is New Zealand. Maybe this is the way to talk around him. And as weird as it is, it may not even be a problem at all. So I went against my better judgment and I decided that, sure, I was gonna ride on this van. So I said to him, no problem. So when he was talking to his buddies, and he said all this, this stuff, it didn't even bother me. I said, okay, let's go. As I met this New Zealander here, he's gonna help me out. He's on the phone with his buddies. <laughs> They're apparently gonna drive me to um, so the spot, after, the vineyard, you know, because they don't drop you right there. Yeah. You have to apparently but, um, catch a ride to I, the I know spot. You guys are awesome but he's gonna, he's gonna help, help me out, you know, with some yeah. guys. They're gonna show me around, so. Amazing thing when you travel by yourself, you always end up meeting really nice people sometimes. It's really cool. And people are really friendly. This was meant to be, bro. This was meant to be. Meet this guy, so. So when he said that, that word, Negro, I was shocked. I was scared. I was nervous. And I was thinking, man, am I getting kidnapped? Is that what's happening here right now? Find out what happens next on the next video. Thank you for watching.